Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Show. I am making a triple threat, triple boomer project. In fact, actually, I need a lot more than these. It will be a six boomer project when I'm done with it. But I want to show you what I've been up to. I've had a problem with the DSP amp on a Land Rover. And for those of you who don't know, the DSP system was brought in by BMW. So it's, it's available in a lot of BMWs. So I think uh, I did once have a 5 Series. I think that had it too. And from the head unit, you, you get uh, a little screen and it says DSP. And it's just basically another amp in the back, which powers the, I think it's 12 speaker system and subwoofer, um, including the subwoofer. And the problem is in all these cars, that amplifier dies. It was made by several companies over like a billion revisions and it's still expensive. It's like two grand or something from Land Rover. It's 300 quid for a second hand one on eBay. They're printing money with these things. So I made a little discovery, which was quite neat. So this is the top of the DSP unit. If you've got one in the back, you'll recognize it. And forget my scribblings, but I'll, I'll go through those. And Basically, you've got three connectors on the uh, DSP unit. So you've got some sort of digital CD input doohickey that's always fallen off. You've got the connector that comes from the radio. So there is a radio in the back as well. So the, the bit that lives in the car is just the screen for the radio and you have a separate radio of all things. Um, you've got this chunky uh, connector which goes to the subwoofers and the power and it's got really thick pins and then you've got another connector which is all the other speakers and they're quite small pins so the nice thing is be these two connectors are actually standard sort of pinny type things so this they're very much similar to this connector right here so it's nice for projects because you want to interface to them you can you can make it on a bit of variable which I'm going to do for prototyping um, so just to let you know then you've got the head unit which talks to the radio which talks to the DSP forget all this stuff and that's it. And what happens when you turn the knob in the head unit for volume or uh, front, back, left, right, all the usual stuff, it sends a signal to the DSP and the DSP adjusts, adjusts the speaker balance and graphics equalization itself. And it does that through this IBUS communication. It's a protocol. And the radio, all this time, the radio is sending an analog line out signal to the box and the box is doing the decisions. Now, happy discovery I made. When this box is faulty, you get in the head unit the words DSP in black, which is saying the DSP is having a problem. Um, I was like, OK. And then if you disconnect the DSP altogether and, t and power cycle the car, maybe re power cycle the battery in the car, the head unit doesn't have DSP at all. <coughs> Pardon me. It's saying no DSP. Now, the benefit of this is when there is no DSP, the radio defaults to a standard mode where the radio, or, you know, I discovered here, or you have get fader and balance and treble all of a sudden appearing here. You don't get the graphics equalizer, you get all the normal car stuff because the radio then defaults to normal car stuff and the analog, instead of becoming a line out, now becomes an actual, you know, adjusted out. The, the, the volumes and things like that are being now adjusted on this line because on a, a regular car without the DSP, it would then go into a little amplifier that then goes to your speakers. So why is this important? It's important because it means if you make some leads with these little pin headers and you take some of your baby boomers or you know third party amplifier, you can get rid of this piece of crap that's failing and you can replace it with something for a few quid. And that's what I'm doing here. So this is my project here. I've picked three sets of speakers. I'm not doing all 12 because frankly I just need to listen to some bl bloody Radio 4 or anything is better than silence right now. I just need something. So what I'm doing, I'm going to wire three and I'm going to wire them in series so I don't have to put a power supply with them. They're all going to be wired in series which may or may not work. I'll check back with you on that one. Um, and I'm going to do the front uh, lows and me uh, mid, mid range. The, l the lows and mid range. I'm not going to do the tweeters. And in the rear, I'm just going to do the mid-range. And these are the pinouts for that. Um, and this is the connector, which is this connector here and this connector here. I'll just show you them abbreviated. So you've got your uh, your header is going to replicate the amp. So this is the bit here. So you're going to have pin 1 there, 13, 14, 26. And these will be your outputs to your speakers from your Baby Boomer outputs. There's videos on Baby Boomers, figure that out. And the other small connector, which is the sound going to the uh, car, which is the amplifier, which is this line here, it's just four pins you need because that's the left channel um, plus and minus and the right channel plus and minus. And I'll probably just do plus, 
plus, minus, minus. And those, again, get hooked into your amp. So you're going to have two of the um, front channels will go to two of these amps to cover these two. And then the rear one will just go to the one at the back. And that should be good. Oh, and don't bust off the heatsink because you're probably going to need those when you're cranking these up. That wasn't very well like, adhered, was it? It's no good at all. Arr, stay on. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start hooking this up and I'll uh, check back with you once it's built and we'll have a go putting it in the car and see if it'll pop. A quick update for you. You can see here I've got the input connector soldered on there and I've marked the pins so I don't screw that up when I'm plugging it into the car. I haven't done an amazing job of this to be honest with you but just to show you I've, I've mounted the amplifiers onto just a bit of copper board with some double sided sticky tape and I've used some rather thick wire, but wire that I just had lying around from a printed um, power supply, PC power supply, to hook up these. So I've actually hooked all of the um, lefts together, all of the rights together, and the ground. So that's the left, right, and ground coming out to that connector for the input. And this, these two wires here are the 5 volt and ground power rail. So that's all that end connected and then the rest now is just the fiddly sort of stuff to this pin header for the actual speaker and I'm not sure I'm kind of tempted just to sort of lash it together using this sort of jumper wire stuff but I don't know yet I'll have to have a little thinky about that but uh, that's definitely the next next phase ah this looks interesting I was rumming, rummaging around in my drawer of curiosity and I've got this which technically I think if you if you imagine this is the car side um, can actually plug in it can actually mate it's these sort of wires with the pin on the end it's not quite a uh, ribbon in the sort of traditional sense but it's lots of nice wires with this connectors now I'm probably not going to use it that way because I kind of want a very um, reliable connector I just want this one big thing but I'm actually going to use this to solder all these connectors just straight onto the boards here where I need to and then just get those other one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve connections coming down to there so I'm just going to crack on with that and then I'll show you how I uh, how I did it all nice work Nice work there, Harry Belafonte. Let's do this thing. Strive to make it right, that's for sure. Putting right the circuits that once went wrong. Right, that wasn't too bad. Just a bit of soldering, just sold those on the end and then did the other end. And there's obviously some sort of pattern appears. Um, but I figure there's enough room here to squeeze the actual connector in and if not we can just bend these pins around a bit and that's it the only thing left to, to sort of uh, do is get some sort of terminals to put on here I'm going to use bullet terminals just Lucas ones and uh, ooh, test it in the car hopefully it won't blow itself up instantly that's always the worry and it tends to happen I'm kind of worried a little bit about these three things in series but technically they'll be getting an under voltage if anything so should be all right Let's go try it. I had a quick try of this and blew out one of the amplifiers. Yes, uh, don't run amplifiers in series. They're not light bulbs, clearly. Uh, probably the first one in the chain was eating all of that 12 volts and then doing something bad. So I've reconfigured it now again. So I've rewired it. So now that they're all uh, fed in parallel and this will have to be a five volt source, which I'm obviously just testing on the bench. So yeah, mm, bit of a boo-boo there, but yes, pa five volt power needed. Whoo, cold out there. Right, um, hooked it up and it worked actually, um, sort of. So I put the radio on and I could hear the sort of classic FM or whatever it decided to tune itself into uh, pretty much at full pelt. So it was pretty loud and it seemed to be coming out a lot of the speakers. I didn't hang around too much because it was that loud. And I checked all of this, it wasn't getting too warm or anything. Um, so we had the classic FM coming through here and then out to the speakers amplified. Great. Problem was, when I tweaked the volume knob, um, it wasn't doing as it's expected and uh, adjusting the, the levels on the volume. So I have a nasty feeling that the anecdotal evidence I've read, remember they've been using this system for sort of like 15 years, I think this is using the um, iBus for controlling the volume um, in both the DSP amp and the simpler 
simplified amp because if you look here you've got analog in right analog in left but you've got nothing for the back channels either so I'm kind of like hmm now the, the connectors that go to this come from the radio module so what I could do is start stepping a bit further back and going to the plug where the plug that plugs into the radio module goes because it may well be that that's where the um, answer lies because there might be particular pins coming out of the back of the radio that I'm not privy to so these could be specific pins just for hooking up to an amp whereas on the radio itself on the back which has the standard euro type connectors um, it might just have the front left front right all the, all the other ones so another level of investigation has to happen but so far I'm, I'm quite pleased with this if one thing it has done though is eliminate um, the other parts of the car the radio all that works it is the amplifier so I definitely know now that the amplifier was at fault so I, I don't know why it went kaput I could uh, bring it back in from the car and have a go and see if I could fix that anyway um, but there in terms of a proof of concept that works um, I can think of one way where this could be quite useful right away though if you're not bothered about the radio in your car you could put a Bluetooth receiver on here yeah and control this straight from your phone because that way then you can control the volume from your phone and wind it back down you know you can have the volume up or down however you like um, and then that way you can still get your GPS and your ebooks or your uh, music whatever you've got going on from your phone so there you go I hope that's have been some use to you I'll probably investigate this further going forward in the future and maybe we'll actually have a workable solution at some point as ever thank you for watching